This week, we're going to take a look at why turning multiple layers into a smart object is a much better choice than the alternative. I'm Dave Cross, and often people tell me they run into this situation where they're creating multiple layers. They want to apply, for example, a filter to all of those layers. So one of the common techniques that people used for many years, and in fact, I was one of them and I used to extol the virtues of this technique all the time, was this concept called stamp visible, where you would use a keyboard shortcut combination to make a new layer that was the composite of all your other layers, which at the time was a good solution. My worry is that people are still using that because old habits die hard, and I think using a smart object is a much better choice. Here's why. So here's a situation where I have multiple layers. Let's say I want to take all of these top layers and apply some effect to them, maybe a filter. Well, the technique that people used to use is they would make sure whatever layers were visible. So in this case, I would hide the background layer and then use this keyboard shortcut, Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E. And what that would do is make a new layer that's like a merged copy of all the layers down below. And at first glance, that seems like a really good idea because it's giving you the opportunity now to apply a filter to that one layer. But the problem with it is if you want to edit the underlying layers, you have to start over again. In fact, I'm going to take a step back here for a second just to show you make this even more complex. Let's put some text in here. All right, so we've got some text here. left and pick a more interesting font and make it bigger. All right, so we're going to put that in here. I'm going to take this floral thing and move it over this side. I should have done this ahead of time, but it just occurred to me that it would be better if we had text in the equation. All right, let's make our text white. Okay, so let's try this again. If I hit the background layer and press that keyboard shortcut, Command Option Shift E. It makes this new layer of all the bottom layers, but here's the problem. If I now go back and show my background again, and I'm gonna apply some effect to this new merge layer on top, but then I want to change the font, or I decide this element is in the wrong position or needs to be lowered the opacity, this merge layer is really like a snapshot at that moment in time. So whatever the layers look like at that moment, this is not live text, these are not live objects, it's just one pixel-based layer that represents all the layers below. So if I did five steps and then realized that I spelt their name wrong or something, I'd pretty much have to start again. So what I'd have to do is delete this layer, edit my type, and then do it again. So instead, what I suggest is using a smart object. I have my top type layer selected. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and select this bottom layer other than the background, and then on any one of them, right click and choose Convert to Smart Object. Now it looks like I've merged those layers together, but if we look closely, there's an important difference. Right here, there's a little symbol on this, which means this is this thing called a Smart Object. So as an example, let's just do something. Let's add a Gaussian Blur. Not the best idea for this kind of thing, but just to show you. Oh, and by the way, the fact that I made a smart object means automatically my filter is smart, which means I have editing options like this, where I can lower the opacity to get this sort of soft, dreamy look. Again, not the best idea, but just to show you the idea. Now, in that first scenario, when I merged them together, if I did all that and then went, oh, wait, these photos are in the wrong position, or the type is spelt wrong, or I don't like that typeface, whatever it might be, as I showed you, I'd have to start again. Here, because it's a smart object, I always have access to the contents inside this smart object. And you do that by simply double clicking on the smart object. It's gonna open a separate window with all the contents. So here's all the layers. So as an example, I could decide, I don't want the couple layer and maybe this floral layer, I should lower the opacity. And now that I think about it, the type maybe would be better if it was up here. So I make whatever changes I want and all I have to do is hit save. It's gonna save the contents and when I come back to my original photo with the smart object, you'll notice those things have changed. The smart filter is still applied, but now the type's in a different position, whatever change I wanna make. 
So if I decide, well, you know, now that I do that, I should go back here. I think I do want all three photos, but maybe the floral should be even lower opacity and the type should be down here, but maybe just a bit bigger. So really the biggest difference is you just have to get used to jumping to this separate window to edit the contents, saving, and that goes back to the original. But when you compare, as I showed you, it's a much better way because it gives you way more editing opportunities. So I hit save. And then when I come back to the original document, again, everything is updated. And because I use a smart filter, of course, I could decide I don't really want that filter after all. So it really boils down to having much more editing control because of this option. So here's the thing. You will still see tutorials where someone says, now use this keyboard shortcut to create a stamped visible or a merged visible or some name like that. And that's okay. But as you saw here, the problem with it is you got to be pretty darn sure that that stamped visible, that merged copy you make doesn't need to be changed because if it does, you have to go back and redo your work. So that, that shows you the advantage of yet another advantage of one of my favorite things, a smart object is the ability to make this editable multi-layered version of a smart object. I'm Dave Cross. Thanks for tuning in. As always, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, if you can subscribe, that would be fantastic. And come back next week for another free Photoshop tutorial.